Hello everybody, this is Full Time Devils. This is the Full Time Review Show. You might notice I've got a guest. We're going to come to that in a second. First, I'm going to tell you what's coming up on this show. We have got the embargo Jose Mourinho presser. So all of the stuff that you've not seen so far, you definitely want to be checking that one out. We've got Statman Dave with his three-point review. We've got the fan cams from the win over Leicester City. And then we've also got the United on YouTube. And I've got this man here next to me as well. So United have been called the at the moment. This is the best team that we've seen since Fergie. Now, you was there part of that from 2007 to 2013. Five league titles, three Champions League finals in four years. I think you're pretty much qualified to tell us what this team is lacking in terms of that. How far away <laughs> do you think we are? Oh, it's Reddy Mullenstein, everybody, before I get carried away. <laughs> Thank you for joining us, Reddy. No problem. No problem, Stephen. Um, well, it's, it's obvious for everybody to see. I think this is what all the United fans have been waiting for, um, you know, to, to a, for a start like this, I think. Uh, it was also a good start last year, but um, throughout the league, it, 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 it didn't really materialise as everybody hoped. But it looks different, you know. There is a there is a there is a, a different attacking urgency in the team. Obviously, Mourinho brought in Lukaku, Matic, two great players that complement the team, that give the team something extra. Um, I think, and there is also a, a determination about the team now. I think the team is again. You know, it's 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 been long enough for not being up there and challenging for the title. And I think this this time round there's this real determination and conviction, and hopefully it it can carry through the whole of the season. So you was there through what was arguably one of the greatest United sides we've ever seen. That team that went three back-to-back -back titles, like I said, the the three Champions League finals in four years. To you, what is the United way? That fabled phrase that we see all the time: this team isn't playing the United way. It's not a formation, is it? It's not a system. Is no. it more a mentality? Well, yeah, yeah you, you could say it, but it's been established through Sir Alex Ferguson for so many years. I mean, he's tried to develop those teams the moment that he started working, uh, you know, at Manchester United. And then obviously when he first started to win things with obviously the class of 92 coming through and, you know, and then obviously he built those, those fantastic successful teams. But it, I can always remember when uh, he brought me into his office um, saying obviously uh, Mick Phelan was uh, promoted to assistant manager and me as first team coach and you had a flip chart there and you had, you wrote a few things on it and, and, and I always remembered it and he says when, when we have the ball and talking about the United Way th this is what I want and what I want our fans to see when we are having the ball I want us to be playing obviously on possession uh, obviously we, know we need to be able to keep the ball but always with a purpose there's always an idea behind that possession but when we attack I want to see this I want to see a team that attacks with speed power penetration and unpredictability and I want you to instill that in that team every single day, no matter what you do, whether it's a finishing drill, whether it's a possession game, whether it's a condition game, whether it's 11 aside or small sided games, that's what I want to see. And that, in my, captures the United way. And, and I think now again in the three, the, the three games that we've seen, you know, with West Ham, with Swansea and, and Leicester, I think you can see those same ingredients, you know, starting to emerge again. And that's, and that's a good sign. Talking about this weekend's game, though, because that is what the full-time re review is here to do. We beat Leicester, we beat them 2-0, but it took another set-piece and it took another late goal. United have struggled a little bit despite the results. I mean, the results have been absolutely fantastic. We're 10 goals mm. up, we're zero goals against, we're three wins from three. But I still see United struggling to break a team down. Um, what do you make of the good performance on Saturday in that aspect? What do you think United's lacking? Well, you have to also not forget, I think... I'm not 100% sure whether that goal for Mata that was disallowed, whether it was offside or not. And that was a great way, you know, how they, they did break them yeah, down. And obviously it was a shot, a rebound, and you, you get it. The, 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 the key is, and we had plenty of those games ourselves, you know, in the time with, with Sir Alex Ferguson. And the, the, the key is to making sure that the, 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 the players and the team still know that there's options. You need to have options. Options give you unpredictability. Unpredictability, you cannot defend. But if you only have one or two things, team will set up, they make it difficult, they get people behind the ball, they, 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 they kill the width, they kill the spaces, and it's very hard. What we always worked on was making sure that we were always maintained the width, whether we had people there or we had people getting, you know, getting into those spaces. We always made it very important for the players to understand how, how important it is crossing the midline. Mm -hmm. And what I mean by that is, if you've got the pitch and in a vertical sense you put a line, what we always knew is that we, we, if we start building up on one side and we concentrate and a lot of players over to one side, the key is then quickly to transfer it to the other side and then to get players like Ronaldo or Nani or Giggs, whatever, into 1v1 situations or 2v1. So that was an element. 
if it's condensed in the centre of the pitch in front of the 18-yard uh, the box, it's important you get people in between the lines constantly, in and out. And then it's important that the players understand to switch to a different rhythm. You need to go to one-touch football. One-touch football and movement. And those are all the elements that we constantly were looking for to break them down. If they stand office, you need to have people that can shoot from distance, like Pogba tried a few times on Saturday. But we had, for instance, Paul Scholes to do that. If they do come, then you play around them. We have seen, you mentioned unpredictability. I think unpredictability is something that Lukaku's brought to us. I think he's also brought that counter-attacking football back. How do you, can you engineer a counter-attack? Can you invite a team to come onto you with mm. the intention of, of hitting them back? Yes, you can. Because obviously that is, to do it, to counter, uh, you need space, you know, to run into and, and to play the balls into. So you need to sort of then say, OK, let's, let's sit off a little bit, let's drop a little bit deeper in the half, let them have the ball, let them get, you know, commit players forward. That's what you want. And then you want to sort of set yourself up that within retaining the ball, you can spring. I'm sure that most of the fans will remember the fantastic games that we played against Arsenal. You know, and especially away for league and and the Champions League, the Champions and, League and that nice was yeah. and that was a particular uh, tactical uh, uh, choice we've made because we knew Arsenal won't change, Wenger will not change. He will still play his football. We knew the links that he he always always tried to build. You know, with a midfielder and a and a front runner. So we knew what sort of passes were coming. You then need to set yourselves up that you can intercept those passes, and then straight away you go. So you have people that you know. Uh, as soon as the, the ball was uh, uh, won in around the, the penalty area or in and around your own half, the, we knew exactly, the players knew exactly what they were doing, whether they were runners or they were to support the first pass. And it worked, it worked a treat. We've got the personnel at the club to do this as well at the moment. Obviously, you had Park, Rooney, Ronaldo, Tevez. Yes. It's not a bad lineup to do that. But no. at the moment, Marshall, Rashford, Lukaku, Mkhitaryan to play those balls in, Matter to play those balls in. We look set up to do that quite effectively at the moment. Yes, and you've always, it, it's already been shown this, this, this season. That's what I like about it, really, the difference between uh, this season, last season, the season before, you know, and all that. The, the urgency is back, you know, the pace, the speed. Mm. I mean, uh, you know, the, the, for instance, the example of, of the, the goal that Lukaku scored where Rashford broke forward, he, he played him in. You know, that is a prime example of it, you know. Um, uh, and, and, and you're going to see a lot of that, and, that, and they're lethal because it's, it's a combination of speed and power. And like I said, in the, in the front lineup, there's a good balance now, a good balance of speed, power, uh, uh, penetration, but also uh, unpredictability with you know, the level of passes that Mkhitaryan can play and, and, and Mata can play. Um, the defence, we've, we've not conceded a single goal this season. Uh, that's got to be a great sign for us. Did you expect Phil Jones to be such an integral part of this team, the way his career's gone with the injuries that he's had and stuff? Well, I'm, first of all, I'm glad he is, he's, he's back and he's playing and he's playing regularly because for all the players to really, you know, mature in, in a position, they go, you have to play games, you have to stay fit, you have to play games. So hopefully he'll, he'll, he'll stay fit. And, 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 and Phil has got a lot of good attributes, you know, he's brave, he's quick, he's strong, he's got everything you want, uh, you know, in a, in a, in a centre-back. So I'm glad he's that. Um, in terms of the clean sheets, very important, it's been mentioned every single time. It was something that Sir Alex Ferguson will reiterate to us all the time. Goals will win you games, clean sheets will win you trophies. Now, do not forget, we, in my opinion, we do have the best goalkeeper you know, in the Premier League in, in, in David De Gea. So, you know, like I said, fingers crossed, a few days to go, but hopefully he'll stay. <laughs> he'll stay, you never know, but the, 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 the signs are all good. But that is really so important, and that settles the team as well, because... Any opposition, you're going, to go, oh, geez, already played three games, conceded nil, it's going to be very hard to score a goal, you know what I mean? So, signs are all good. So, Jose Mourinho has got some news for us, uh, and he talks specifically about the defence in his embargo press conference. Let's see what he's got to say. What did you say about your defence? Phil Jones has been a player that Sir Alex Ferguson used to talk of for constant injuries. Can he be a real rock at the back with Bayern? Can you see that? He's, he's potentially a very good player. He's still young, he's still in a learning age, but for years and years and years he was injury prone and he has a problem now. He has a problem now. Um, he's complaining about, um, he's complaining about uh, 
uh, ankle uh, problem. So he's the kind of player where we need to have him always in our hands with a lot of, uh, of care from, from the medical department, from the fitness um, coach, from my assistants uh, on the gym, working always on prevention, on recovering. If we manage to have him to have him safe, protected from injuries, I think potentially is everything I like in a in a central defender. Um, Eric is is playing really well. I have to say that Smalling is in very good conditions, and I have also to say that Victor is improving every day. So, as you know, against Basel, Jones and Eric they are both. Uh, suspended. So against Basel, we play Victor and and Smalling, and no problem at all. The squad is the squad is good, and the mentality of the players is is very good too. And how do you keep up this this intensity you've got going? What I know that we've seen you do it before with Chelsea, but what's the key to keeping this intensity in performance? You know, I have to say something uh, that I felt once in my career when I was. Lady uh, manager, and I was not playing in European competitions. If I have one week to prepare a match, my team is always very good. It's always very good because you have time to organize a, a week of work going through every item of the game. When you start playing every two days, every three days, is more based on what you build during pre-season and what you build during these weeks that are not going to be repeated. From now, no more clean, clean weeks. From now, every week has a midweek match until the moment we are out of one of, of the Cups. So I think now my team is also the mirror of, of the work we are doing in, in clean weeks where we can train five days and go through every item of the game plan. Okay, thanks guys. Thank you. So, first question that we saw there, Jose Mourinho was asked in the press conference. Uh, they said to him, um, how much of the injuries slowed down the development of Phil Jones? Do you agree that the injuries have slowed down the development of him? How good could he be? Uh, and are you shocked that he's managed to make himself such an important part? Because Jose picks him every single time he's available. Yeah, so he must, he must like him, uh, for sure. Um, it does, I think, in terms of the first question, does it slow progressive players down? It does. I mean, the, the last thing that any player wants is, is injuries, because you can't really fully train with the team, and uh, et cetera, et cetera. So it takes time to get back into the swing of things. So it, it, it does slow things down more than anything. It is the games that you have to play, you know, uh, and, and, and the various levels. Uh, Premier League games, you know, European games, Champions League games. Because all that experience adds up to, you know, how good you're going to become. And you need to get in many of those, you know, situations as possible. I mean, like I said, I, I hope he's, he's, he's done now with injuries. I hope he's going to stay fit. And, you know, I think if he just stays in and he plays and he plays, you, you'll, you'll see Phil going from strength to strength. Uh, he goes on to say that he's everything that he likes in a central defender, which is clear that you know, he starts him every time. We haven't conceded a single goal, which I think is absolutely insane from the start of the season. I think it's good signs. Uh, and he goes on to start talking about Lindelof. Um, he mentions that he's improving every day, so there's obviously a level that he expects him to attain that perhaps he wasn't at when he first came. Um, from what you've seen of Lindelof, do you think he can break into that first team and, and get rid of one of Bay or Jones as the first choice? Or do you think he's going to have to wait for Well, it's, again, it's options. I mean, for a club like Manchester United, you need to have a big squad. Back in the Champions League, you want to you want to basically compete for all for all the the titles. Um, so you need to have, you know, in depth uh, players in depth that you can use if necessary. With Lindelof, it's it's another. Uh, of course, Mourinho knows him and he, he he's got faith in him. Otherwise, he wouldn't have not brought him to Manchester United. But bringing it coming to the Premier League is one. Then coming to the Premier League in Manchester United, you know, it's two. It's too big. Big things to get used to, you know, and sometimes it takes a little bit of time. You had a fair, I think, a fair uh, amount of minutes in the, in the pre-season to, to get a feel for, for, for all the things. And sometimes you just need to give players a little bit more time to, to settle in and, and most importantly for, uh, 
for this league and when the league starts, obviously what I think uh, Mourinho has done, um, you know, uh, put his trust a little bit more in, 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 in the safe hands of sort of Phil, because like you said, every time he's fit, he's played him and he knows what he's, he's going to get. And, you know, those three wins, especially with the three clean sheets, is very important, which is fine. Gives Lindelof a bit more time to settle in. And, uh, you know, whenever he's called upon, he'll um, you have to you know, have to perform to what Mourinho is expecting of him. I get my rating of a defender and how to rate how good a defender is from Wes Brown, actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, when we interviewed Wes Brown, I think it might have been on camera, it could have been off camera, I asked him, how do you judge what a centre, how good a centre-half is? And he says, forget what they can do on the ball, it's all about how they do 1v1. What's their positioning like? Did he get turned and all that sort of stuff? So when I started watching what Lindelof does, I thought, defensively, he's not a good defender. Mm. He's excellent on the ball, he can play out, he can step out from the back. Can you improve to the level that Jose Mourinho is going to want for a first team in training on that sort of thing? Is that something that you can improve in training or if you've either got it or not? No, 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 you, you, can, you can improve on it. But, I mean, just listen to the words that, that Wes shared with you. That's spot on because the most important thing at any level, what, what do you want uh, defenders to do first and foremost? Defend, defend well. And the added extra is obviously what can we do in the ball and extra things around. And if you look at the defenders that United has had through the years, talking to Steve Bruce and Pallister and Fernand and Vidic and, you know, and Wes, of course, you know, they were exactly good at that. Strong in the air, you know, uh, when it needed to be, you know, aggressive, tenacious, you know, good timing in tackles, you know. Um, and, 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 but, but like I said, yes, that's what training is for. You can improve. And, uh, and, you know, you need to bring those players in those, the same sort of game scenarios uh, as much as you can. Uh, Lindelof and Smalin, as Jose mentioned in the press conference, will be playing against Basel. Do you have any worries about Matt Sharpness for bringing in a whole new centre-half partnership that hasn't played a single minute so far? It surprises me a little bit that he's, he's come out with that, you know, to say already that soon and that early I'll, I'm going to play them too at Basel because at some point, in some ways, you want to sort of maintain, you know, the like you said, the partnerships, the the, the momentum that is going. And like you said, you haven't conceded, so that becomes some sort of a, you know, what you call it, something that players want to hold on to, especially if you talk about the goalkeeper, mm. you know, and, and, and your, your centre-backs, your, your full-backs. Now, listen, it, it's, it becomes a different sort of challenge to do that. So, um, but he will, he will use his squad. If he made the decision, then he's probably thought about it, and hopefully it will work out well. But that, that's because Bay and Jones are both suspended um, yep. following the, the Europa League. Uh, yeah, well, that, that's then it's straightforward, and that's the most valid reason that you can get. So because I thought if he didn't, they're not suspended, then it would be a bit of a surprise, and I would, I wouldn't have thought that he would have done yeah. that. But this is what, like I said, you know, it is about. You want to you want to compete in all competitions, and if players are not there to play for their injury or or suspensions, then other ones have to step up. Um, he, he mentions about preparation as well, and this is something that I think is huge. He says when he's got a week to prepare for a game, I think he almost went to say, I'll win every game, and then I think he pulled himself back and went, we do very well um, mm-hmm. when we have a full week to prepare. We've <clears> got, <throat> after the international break, we've got the League Cup comes back, we've got Champions League. What is the difference in your week as a coach when you've got a week and then when you've got like two games in a yeah. week? What gets dropped? Where do you cut the corners? It's not really uh, cutting corners, it's more maximising the time that you've available. And, and obviously, I can only speak for myself and how Sir Alex Ferguson managed the team throughout those games, but it was always making sure that we were always sort of managed three games ahead. The bigger, and we didn't have many weeks where there was no games. You know, it was like, uh, you know, what is it? it was unique if that happened. If you do, and I can see where he's coming from, because that's when you can really spend eye to detail. You know what I mean? You know what you're up against. You can, you can sort of get the messages across to the players and the team in, in various different ways. You can speak to them on the pitch. You can uh, have individual chats with players. You can bring them off. You can show video. Everything is there and it's not rushed. What we had to do was sort of managing, sort of like I said, three games ahead. And then we would sort of work backwards. So if we, for instance, would know that we were playing Chelsea away on that particular Sunday, and the manager had a clear idea, most likely, who he was going to play. If in a midweek we would play a Champions League game, away or a home, and was that, then from that he said, oh, OK, yeah, we can see this. This is most likely how I'm going to set up here. 
and we're playing, for instance, whatever, Stoke at home this, this Saturday, and these are the players that I think we're going to use. So some of those players here against Stoke would have maybe also played against Chelsea. There was obviously quite a few players that wouldn't have, would play in the Champions League game. So the key for us is then to making sure that you know you get you get the right preparation, the right messages across for the for the particular performances, mm. and you get always into a scenario of performing. And the players that haven't played, you know, they obviously train the next day. They start to prepare for the Wednesday game in the Champions League. Um, some 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 that are you know that that come off that first game and still have to play in that game, but won't play that game after. So it's a bit of a complicated scenario, to be fairly honest. But you need to maximise all the time available to make sure you get the information across, you get the work in, and, me and most, most, most importantly, the players understand what the game plan is going to be for the upcoming game. So you're saying you, that Fergie would pencil in squads or teams yeah. for three matches ahead. Do you start giving tactical information to the players for the second and third games no. early doors? No. You just go, this game, here's what we're doing for this game, as soon as that's out of the way. Yeah, the, the, players, the, players, the players necessarily wouldn't know. It's just for us to get oh, us right, okay. to get our head around as a staff, manager, McFeeling, myself. We would say, "What are you thinking of?" So then we started to prepare and look because it wasn't always like in casting stone. We would think maybe, well, we we, we were thinking about this, but and things could happen: suspensions, uh, injuries. Right, of course. You know what I mean? But in in general, we had a good plan. We had a good a good idea, and that, and that's where we worked from. And the players knew, they knew in in some some extent that, that you know the games are coming thick and fast. They weren't necessarily know exactly when they were called upon, but you know that's where the squad is for. Awesome. Right, we're going to have some more questions for Rene as soon as we get back. We've got Statman Dave's three-point review coming up, and I think he's got a question in there for you as well. So take it away, Dave. Statman Dave back once again. It's three-point review time. Let's do it. First up, let's talk about Marcus Rashford. United nil, Leicester City nil. 67 minutes gone at Old Trafford. And who comes off the bench? Marcus Rashford again to change a game. We think the opening game against West Ham United, Marcus Rashford's run on the counter-attack, the assist of the Lukaku goal, really changed that game. And again, his introduction against Leicester City had a similar effect. Juan Mata has been good this season, playing in the little pocket of space with Henrik Mkhitaryan, but against Leicester, United need a bit more width than that final third. That's what Rashford gave United as soon as he came on the pitch. That forward pass to Paul Pogba, running past him, hitting the byline and pulling the ball across. Of course, the goal he scored came from the resulting corner, but it was that positivity that we hadn't seen from United in a wide area, really driving, especially down that right-hand side. For me, Marcus Rashford is going to be absolutely crucial to Manchester United in all competitions this season. I can't wait for, to see him in the Champions League. Moving on to other guys that have played in Champions League finals before, and that is Paul Pogba. What a performance he had against Leicester City. Man of the match by a country mile. He completed 93 passes against Leicester City. That was 26 more than any other player on the pitch managed. He completed the most passes in the final third, the most in the opposition's half, and of course had most touches on the ball. What I liked about Paul Pogba is he's been freed by Nemanja Matic. And he just pops around the final third, picking up little areas of space, playing passes, playing one-twos. But also as well, shooting. I think that's something that reminded me of Cristiano Ronaldo when he first came on the scene at Manchester United. He had a period where he just, in a game, he did the first sort of 5, 10, 15 minutes, he'd have about four or five shots. Pogba had six shots in the first half against Leicester City. That was, in fact, four more than the entire Leicester City team managed combined. What I like about that is he's going for goal. He's having efforts on goal, a few of them from range, that were only whiskers past the post. I think Paul Pogba this season is easily going to score over 10 league goals. And if he can continue this form, he's going to be one of the best players in the Premier League. Again, the top passer in the Premier League this season. Moving on to the final thing we're going to talk about, and that is, of course, Eric Bailly. The guy is a genius in a defensive sense. I love Bailly's, you know, he's so patient when he's winning the ball. He's so patient, he'll win it back and then he'll turn out of, out of danger. It's something that we've seen this season, that Eric Bailly, Phil Jones' partnership is looking really solid, looking really strong. And over the first three games, United have kept three clean sheets, of course. David De Gea saving United at the end. But it was the two centre-backs that arguably got that clean sheet for Manchester United. So solid when they were dealing with uh, the opposition attackers. And that's that from me, guys. If you haven't already, subscribed to me on YouTube, Statman Dave. But to finish things off, a question for Rennie. What do you think Paul Pogba needs to work on when he gets into the penalty area? We've seen so many positive moves from midfield. Paul Pogba getting into the danger zone, but then just missing the far post or the near post. In terms of his shooting technique, is there anything that he could work on in that danger zone? So we'll come to Dave's question in just a second, but we're going to come to the comments. And so Mohamed has asked, do you think Lukaku and Ibrahimovic are going to make a good partnership? And do you think we'll even see them together? Or do you think they'll be rotated in and out? It's a possibility. I mean, it's, um, 
it's good news that Ibrahimovic has decided to to stay at Manchester United. I mean, he had an unbelievable season uh, last year. He showed that everybody how important and how what a good a player he is. Again, he gives something different. You know, they're both tall, strong players, but Ibrahimovic gives something different. I think as a player, um, will he use him? Um, I think so. At times, that that could well be. You know, if you, if you are chasing a game or you really need to have, you know, uh, your top goal scorers both both on the pitch. Then it's a terrifying prospect, isn't it? Ah, like it's, 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 it, if, if they, yeah, exactly. <laughs> if they if they and and Lukaku's got this. You know, he's got this uh, this way of, of of running in behind a lot, where uh, Zlatan is more in link link up and then join in. So yeah, it could it could well work. Yeah. Uh, Dino in the comments has also asked, who was the easiest player to work with when he was at United? Uh, the easiest, I think, I can't really single anybody out in that respect because what I've always found as working as a first team coach for United for those six years, I thought it was, they're all top, top professionals and, and obviously it was Sir Alec Ferguson that laid down the foundation for so many years, that work ethic and coming to the training ground and enjoy yourselves and express yourselves and you know, you want to be better and we're only working here for one thing, to win the next game and to win the next trophy. So. I, I can't really, you know, I can't really recall back on anybody easy or not easy. They were all top professionals that wanted the best and wanted to perform to the best, and therefore they knew they had to really, really, uh, you know, train well. And and that was, a, you know, it was just a pleasure. All right, Dave's question then from the the video we just saw was, what does Pogba need to work on in terms of his finishing? So obviously we we see him having a couple of sighters, but is there anything in his technique that you're seeing, or do you think it's just? A well, it's a bit it's a bit of a mixed bag. If you look at him again, he's he's had quite a few attempts yesterday from quite some distance, so that is good and that's promising. Uh, a few ones were really really close, and and a few others where he wanted to sort of bird bend it or could. I think he's sometimes still a little bit a little bit erratic. Sometimes doesn't make the right decision, you know, to where it's it's not the right time to shoot as such. Uh, but he has it in him, you know, he, he, like I said, it's very important for midfielders that can have, you know, a pop from like 30, 35 yards out of the box. And he just, he just need to, to, like I said, practice it in, again in training. It's all about, you know, composure, accuracy and that sort of thing. And, you know, like they always say, you know, uh, practice makes perfect and practice make, makes permanent. That's, that's the only way to do it. And you'll see them then flying in. Uh, did you ever think we'd see him back at Old Trafford after he left in 2012? Well, in football, in football, you never know. We do knew it was it was a fantastic prospect coming through, and everybody, I think, hated or didn't like you know the fact that he that he that he left United, and and, and I think it, in this way round, you know, it, it has served him well. Let me put it that way. He's, he's had a fantastic development in his career in, in Juventus. He broke into the French national team, so he's got a lot of experience. So it was before you know he comes back now, you know, before uh, 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 more mature players as, as such, and. Uh, you know, like I said, yesterday, last year was again for him also a season to, to get to get back into the swing of the Premier League. Into United, United is still sort of in a building transition process. You can now start to see more and more things falling into place. And for him himself, because he's this, he's this and-and player. You know, he's powerful in the midfield. You know, uh, you, you, you want him to do his defensive duties, but he has, has also so much, you know, to give going forward, whether his range of passing, and about his, 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 his ability to score a goal himself. I honestly think he's a, he's a real, not replica, but he's got a, a lot of traits that Paul Scholes had as a footballer, especially that going forward side. Do you agree? Yeah, although, although you can't compare them in, 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 in respect to the size as, as such, oh. obviously. But I can see where you're coming from. Uh, and, and Paul was such a magnificent player. And obviously, uh, in the time that he was still at United, I'm sure he's, he's trained and he's seen mm. you know, uh, Paul training and playing and and yeah if, if he can adapt and if he can basically get part of the game where Paul was good the range of passing you know the the ability to give rhythm to the play sometimes slow it down sometimes speed it up you know with one you know 50 60 70 yard of pass to open the whole thing and he's I think he's got that all right cool let's go and check out the fan cams from this week's win over Leicester and see what some of the Reds outside Old Trafford had to say immediately after the match We've just come here like, I want to talk about Fellaini. We don't get many of these. these no, because like I think the guy's actually a class me. He comes on and he does a job and I don't see what people think about why, why people call him shit. Because he's a good player, man. 
Do you think do you think he's got, he's got something about him where he can change games for us? Yeah, he come on today and he's done his job. He scored the goal. What what more can you ask for off that? Phil Jones should have been man of the match today because it was super. Everything he did, nice and simple. Played football like he should be played. It was superb. Well, they were good substitutions today, weren't they? Yeah. I thought Mata played very very well, uh, and um, as he was getting tired, getting replaced. Strength in depth, right? That's right. Yeah, strength in depth. Yeah. Well, ten minutes ago, in the first half, throw me mate up, hundred quid. Man United, Man United minus one. So it's that through. Come, it's come through. So when we scored, when we one 0 I thought, oh no. Were you worried at the penalty? Oh, course, well, penalty. I started celebrating. I thought that's it. My bet's in. I turned around and I went, he's missed it. I went, oh no. How can I get out this bet? <laughs> I'm gonna spend the f entire first half of this season going, listen, we can't get carried away, it's early days, and we won the first three games of last season, mm. but I think we've won the first three games of this season in markedly different style, I don't think anyone would really argue that. If you think back to the Bournemouth game, the beginning of last season, we were pretty dreadful in the first half. The Southampton game, which we won 2-0, they had a lot of chances in that game, and Pogba looked really good that night, but um, that was almost like he was playing on adrenaline. And then the whole game was the third game, and we scraped through thanks to a Mark Rashford late goal. Now, okay, there's an argument to say we slightly scraped through this game. I was worrying, is it going to be the same as last season? A nil-nil draw, but we were clinical enough and scored. We've got competition for places here at the moment. We've got competition for places, but it's always it's only a good thing for the club, isn't it? It's a good thing for the club, good thing for the fans, good thing for the players. Everyone's competition, they're all competing for a spot, so it's good, it's good overall for the team. The crowd today. It was a party atmosphere, <laughs> wasn't it? We, yeah, were I think he's fine with we were on the concourse at half time, <laughs> jumping up and down. Yeah, yeah. People were throwing beers in the air. It was brilliant. There was a guy with a Fellaini wig on in front of us. He was jumping up and down. Did you ever start to feel a bit edgy today? Yeah, I guess a bit edgy when it gets late, but I think the crowd were good to be fair again today because it's early on in the season. We've not had it where I think towards the end, end of last season when it was home draft, home draw, the crowd gets tired and agitated and everyone's like, everyone's down, the, like the mood's a bit lower, but. I think the way we've started, I think people had a bit more faith that we'd pull through. Um, I think everyone's really positive. I think it's something like there's a, re a really a buzz about the place. Like three wins out of three. Ten we've goals. still not conceded ten not goals. Not conceded a goal. Pretty much perfect in it so far, mate. That today, you know, you can pick holes in it. At the start, I was just, I mean, like we had we had the ball in all the right areas, but we weren't doing an awful lot with it. You know what I mean? Lots of clueless crosses where I just thought, have we even got a plan with these crosses? But it was one of them where it, it, where you were constantly thinking like if this was back in Fergie's day, you'd just be like you'd be oh, right, it's gonna come eventually. Don't worry. You know, let's see if a few injuries kick in and how we deal with that. And obviously, it's a great start and the fans are up. Like you said in the Stratford end today, it was unbelievable and more of the atmosphere from the fans, more of the performances, and hopefully we'll challenge throughout the season. So that was what the lads and the lasses in the fan cams had to say. Now the first one that we got there was someone saying Fellaini does a job. What does that mean? Because we see that all the time. <laughs> Is that a way of saying someone's a bit limited, but they do exactly what the manager's asking them to? Or? Yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in, in some ways, I mean, what, what it refers to is that um, the, the way that sort of Mourinho's used Fellaini of late is, is most of the time, you know, bringing him in to see the game out or to give him just this, this extra push, you know, going forward uh, when he plays him a bit higher up. But that's basically it. It's a really specific because. You, you have to analyse the player itself. You know, he's, he's a unit. He's, he's tall. He's, he's give you that, gives you that height, that presence. He's still got that, that ability to go to search forward as well, as you could see last Saturday when he when he when he picked up that goal. So, but that's what it is. You know, and it could be many different ways. I mean, it could be a winger that is really quick and nippy and skillful. You say you put him on a wing because if you get someone if you want, he'll be the man. He, he can do a job. You know what I mean? That's basically what it means. And he obviously, Mourinho clearly trusts him. The, the performance against Ajax in the Europa League final, especially, is probably one of the standout performances of Fulham. Yes, yes. And again, uh, I think Mourinho is very clear in, to all the players in, in sort of what he expects from them, you know. And some players have got a bit, a, bit, a bit more variety to their game, so you can use them in a wider, in a broader scale. Some are a bit more specific. Um, but at the end of the day, that's what the manager you know, ask for all the players, you know, to do their job. Do you think Fellaini's one of those players that adds to what you were saying about earlier with the options and the unpredictability? Options, yes. Unpredictability, not too sure. Depending again, you know, like you said, what if you talk about the United way, how, how do you want to play, you know, and, it, and, and it's like, you know, that, that, that quick, slick, you know, attractive, you know, football through the lines. Um, 
with with obviously Fellaini coming back, you know, sort of before he joined Man United, when he was at Everton, it was more like a sort of a vocal player to play up to and play off from, you know what I mean? And that's the different options he will bring to the team. Yeah, it was much more of a 10 than at Everton, it's more of an 8, you'd say. Yeah, 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 yeah absolutely. Uh, Paul mentioned in the fan cam there about uh, not getting carried away. We almost have to apologise as United fans at the moment. Anytime we're reviewing a game and sort of like preempt the people saying that you're getting giddy, you're getting excited. What would you do as a staff when you get this sort of run? Because clearly you're aiming to get runs like this, but then you don't want the players to think the job's done. So how do you keep players clear on what's going on and getting that run and not getting carried away themselves? Again, for, for us... In the period when we were there, it was slightly different because we were in a in a very highly successful period, with a manager that knew the in, the, the Premier League inside out, and he would always have a you know a chat in the start of the season, you know, for the players to sort of quick review back to the season before, whether we we won things or like in that season where we just missed out on that you know that one goal and with, with City winning the league and. Just a quick review, but again, to really set, set your fine tune everything. And everybody knew that it was a marathon, not a sprint. Everybody knew, you know, the, 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 the main objectives is Premier League, Champions League, FA Cup, you know, uh, at that time, I think the Carling Cup it was, but it was clear. And nobody was getting carried away because you always had the season, sort of, the start of it, the middle bit, and the run-in. Yeah, and the key is that on the start of the run-in, you want to be there and thereabouts. And if we are there and thereabouts, uh, Ferguson always used to say, we've got a very, very good chance because of the experiences that we've had. In this case, with Mourinho, his second season in, the club coming off, you know, sort of three seasons of having sort of underperformed in the Premier League. That's why I say it's a different uh, um, mindset, I think, for the players now. They feel now that they're ready again to compete for the title. Yeah, because the team has gone stronger, new players have come in. There's a determination now and a conviction. The key is to making sure that because everybody's like, oh, you know what I mean? The, the key is that, yes, there will be more in, important games coming up, stronger games coming up. We haven't really played any, any ones that we're probably going to compete with and against around the title. But those, those, those games will tell us a lot. And I think we are far better equipped uh, at this moment in time than we have in previous seasons. The 2008 season where we won the Champions League and the Premier League, we won one draw and one loss one out of our first three. So you wouldn't have had the same sort of reactions that we're getting right now no. after the th first three games. We didn't become top of the league until late in January. Yeah. But once we got to the top of the league, we stayed there. Do you think there's an advantage to being chasing or do you think it's just getting the points on the board as soon as you can, when you can? Well, yes, because you don't also, you don't want to lose too much, too much ground because if you have to, uh, you have to make up a lot of ground, you know, then... then you know, that's even more difficult. So, no, I think everybody wants to have a good start, but sometimes United had a bit of a history of being, being slow starters. I think we, we looked at that as well and we addressed it and we, we, th we thought at the beginning of the last, uh, in the, in the last few seasons we actually started well as well because then we focused a bit more on the players that were one fit, mm. you know, and, and in form, on form, and, and kept them in for the first sort of three weeks. There wasn't many midweek games at that time, so by the time... The Champions League started to kick in. You started to look, so it gives other players to come up to speed a, a, a little bit, uh, a little bit more. But no, in this case, I think it's very important for this good start. Really important because it takes, it takes sort of some doubt away, some speculation away. Oh, here we go again, and that's what you don't want. I mean, you've heard the the, the, uh, the word confidence a lot through the manager, through players, you know, and and that's what it does. It creates a good feel factor around the place. People like to come to train. Winning is, there's no better medicine than winning. Mm. Yeah, and he also mentioned his press conference last week. He, he wants to see how this team responds to going a goal down. I think that's going to be a key thing to finding out the character of this team. Isn't it? Yeah, but, but I think, again, he is... He is um, Mourinho is a very pragmatic manager. He, you know, he, 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 he looked at the last season, he analyses it, he knows exactly what he wants. Again, you look at his, his transfer policy, he brings the players in. They're more solid, it's more this, it's more that, more pace, more this and everything in it. So things have started to fall into place. But he is obviously a very experienced manager that has done it in various countries with various clubs. Mm. He knows what it is to win the league and what you need to do. So he'll be keep everybody's feet on the, on, on the floor and focus on, on the performance. That's the only thing you do. All right, cool. Right, let's see what everybody's got to say in United on YouTube. 
Another win for Manchester United, three wins out of three in the Premier League going into that international break. Really pleased with that. Two different goal scorers as well. We've got a real variety in our goal scoring so far this season, which is great to see. Rashford and Marwan Fellaini get into good sway United. It feels so good this season to see the chances and chances that have been created are leading to us being much more clinical in front of goal. Ten goals in three games. It is a proud moment to be a United fan. Again, absolutely ecstatic. Another three points, another clean sheet. I think this is the most balanced team we've had since Fergie retired. But I thought we were more than good for the win and it wouldn't have flattered us if we'd have got another 4-0 win. Um, I think we, you know, we dominated the game. Uh, we struggled to score, obviously. We struggled to break them down at times and after that penalty, you, you know, you did wonder, God, is it going to go back to the way it was last season? But there's just a confidence now, obviously encouraged by the first two results, but there's a confidence in this team that we didn't have last year. The only downfall was we didn't score more goals and we didn't score any early goals. It would be nice to get a few early goals to settle the nerves, but overall can't ask for no more than that going into the international break. Not really disappointed about that Lukaku chance. I'm sure that he'll be bouncing back this season. At least 20 goals under his belt. So that's what I think in the Premier League this season. The team is full of absolute units. You look at the back four. Valencia's a big guy. Jones, Baye. Matic and Pogba, Lukaku is an absolute beast. So we've got a team full of units and we've got pace as well. Um, you know, Jose seems to know his best, uh, well, certainly his best starting 10 uh, in the present squad, um, which can only, you know, only work out well for us because I think he, he really struggled to know what his best team was last season. And everyone's having an impact. The full squad, the subs he's making are brilliant. Um, really having an impact on games. Hopefully we can come back after the international break and continue this momentum and carry on and keep winning. I also think that Phil Beckenbauer-Jones deserves a shout out. He has been absolutely immense. Um, it's like a new signing for us. If he can keep fit, then it's going to be an absolute star. And uh, let's look forward to some more victories uh, in the next few games coming up. Come on, United. Let's go. I'm absolutely certain Harves is putting that on. There's no way he's pretending to be ecstatic with that sort of thing. We're going to talk about the Kerala Blasters shortly as well. So if you've got any questions for Rene uh, about the Blasters specifically, let us know and they'll start to come in and we can ask him. Uh, Dan mentioned in the video there about the international break. Um, how does that affect momentum? You go into an international break after three wins as a coaching staff. Are you gutted about that or is it just something you have to put up with? Well, yeah, well, it, you have to. I mean, I mean, there's one good thing because I can remember previous years they had another friendly game sort of in the beginning of August. The league was just started and then they threw an international friendly. Luckily they got rid of that. So this is at least you know where you're up, you know, uh, what you're up against, you know you've got some time off. I mean in many ways we used, we used to basically, uh, for a few things, obviously you've got a lot of internationals if you've got, they, they, they fly out all over the place to, to, to play their international games. Uh, it's a good way for us to see, obviously to quickly review where you're at to recharge your batteries yourself, you know, to sometimes get away from it for one or for a, a few days. I'm sure that the manager uh, will do the, uh, Mourinho will do the same thing. But obviously we always had a program for the players that weren't within internationals, you mm -hmm. know, so you need to make sure that they keep taking over and keep training. But um, yeah, it's, 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 um, it, it, it does it affect momentum, um, you know, I, I think it's sometimes more welcome that if you go through a bat, patch so you can really basically step back and say you know so it goes away a little bit sort of and then you can make it a fresh start you know obviously when when you're doing well like United does you want to you know, keep going and, and, and pick it up where you've left off absolutely right let's see if there's any comments on the blasters um, I saw one from Ray uh, what do you expect in your first season in India have you got expectations from the board or have you been told what you're expected to do I have to say, it was uh, I, I flew out in July for the uh, for the for the player draft, the Indian player draft, which was a was a really good exercise to uh, to experience to be a part of. Is that similar to the MLS style? It, it is it's slightly different because um, with the, within the MLS, a lot of teams have their own players, and then it's more about college players, and you don't see many of them actually getting into the MLS. These are players basically all sort of within the ISL setup. Every club had a chance to retain five players, three senior, two younger ones. Wait, so the whole like roster's kind of go into a hat, you pick the five Exactly, you want. exactly. So, so it was a really interesting because I had to really do, prepare myself and do my homework because obviously I, I don't know as well the Indian league and the Indian players. So you really had to, 
to prepare yourself well. But we did we did that well because obviously I've used obviously the players, the people, the, the staff that are at the club uh, to making sure that they could sort of lay out a plan for me. OK, what, what are the sort of best players in certain positions where we look for? Plus of my contacts that I had, I had three good contacts that know the Indian League really well. So I could cross reference it. So when it came back to me, I had a really fairly good idea. Then, you know, you, you all go into, into a different draws. And uh, I think all the teams went actually in the draw from round three. Before that, it was the two new clubs and the ones that haven't retained any players. And then you pick a letter, A to J, and we were the last one in the pick. So that meant that already 13 players in the draft were already selected before we could pick our first player. So you also need to start to anticipate. Yeah, you need your first choice, second choice, third yeah, well, choice. Yeah, exactly. Players. You need to anticipate what is this club probably going to go for? What's that player going to go for? You need to look at yourself because you know you've got seven to eight foreigners that you're going to play in certain positions. So you need to sort of... But I think we came out We came out really, really well. I'm very pleased with, with obviously, the squad that we got. Uh, you've, you've, and we've not mentioned it. You've brought Dimitar Berbatov and Wes Brown. That's yeah. some serious experience and talent that you bring into the league. Is there any more transfers you're bringing in? Uh, well, obviously, we had to bring in, uh, uh, you know, seven, eight foreigners, and we've filled seven spots so far. So, I've also brought Paul Rachupka, who's yep. got yeah, a... He used to be the youth player yeah, United. Yeah, with, with, with United. So, uh, because, like I said, with, with Wes and Paul, obviously, they know each other, and good communication is important, you know, in the back line to get a solidity from the back. Obviously, I've worked with Wes. Obviously, Dimitar is basically a, a fantastic coop to making sure that he, he's, he's wanted to join us because... Is he the best player in the league? Are you expecting that? Well, he is, he's top draw, isn't it? I'm so glad he's, he's, he's playing for us because I'm sure there was interest of other teams. Uh, but he was, he was very clear, he says, I'd love to, to, to come and work with you again. And he's obviously doing a little bit more on the coaching side, which is good. So he's expanding, you know, his view in, in, into football and beyond, which will help because he can then sort of also help. Because we need to be realistic, obviously, with, with to making sure that we help the Indian players uh, to improve. Um, I bought a, we brought in a centre, uh, left centre back, um, Serbian player, um, Pasic, a really good prospect, 25 years of age. For me, a big surprise that he is actually not playing sort of in the championship because I think that is definitely a level he could, he could play at. Um, we brought in some Ian Hume uh, that was there, has already played there for three seasons, played for Kerala Blast in the first season then moved to Calcutta, but now he's coming back. Um, knows the league, you know, gives us a lot of energy up front. Still, again, good experience. And then we want to fill the other place with some young players. So we bought in a, a young Ghanaian boy, very, very promising player, Courage Perkinson, very skillful, can be the man, can score goals. And a young and upcoming striker, um, Mark Sifnios. He's got a Dutch-Greek background, and I sort of know him, you know, from my contacts. And uh, again, you know, so we've got a good mix, good mix of experience and a good mix of, of some younger, younger players. From what I've seen, Kral is one of the best supported clubs out there uh, with an absolutely mental fan base. So expecting yeah. packed houses every single week. Yes, yes. I mean, it's one of the things, what, 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 what was one of the big draws for me because people that, that obviously play there and, and, and been there and seen it. And I've also spoke to Aaron Hughes that I, I work with at, at Fulham and he played there last year and he says, Ren, you've, you've experienced a lot of things in Old Trafford, 76,000 and fantastic you know, experiences, but this is going to be something different and something special. So I'm really looking forward to it. Awesome. Um, I think that was it in terms of the questions that we had. Um, yeah, I think that's pretty much it. Um, any more questions from you guys? Um, I think we're going to wrap it up. So thank you very much to Rene for joining us. Thanks to you guys at home. Wish you all a luck in India with uh, Kerala. And we're definitely going to check you out because we've got a massive United connection. Absolutely. Uh, Kerala, everyone's little favourite B team now over in India. I think as United fans, I think we owe it to them to go and give them a, our support. Uh, we are going for 500k this season. You know that already. So make sure to hit that subscribe button if you're new around here. Get any of your questions, comments, anything like that in below. And we will see you in a couple of days. Laters.